Hi guys. It is a spectacularly gorgeous, would be over the top beautiful day, except for a little bit of smoke, a little bit of smoke from the apocalyptic wildfires burning a few miles north of here. But otherwise, it is a gorgeous summer Sunday here in the collapse of global industrial civilization here at Bugs in a Jar Farm where the little dog and I were putting the finishing touches on our latest uh, tiny house, Seahorse in the Pines. So come see us at Seahorse in the Pines. But right now, it is Sunday. It is June 11th, 2023. And I want to thank Alert, uh, Alert listener Fat Boy. Fat Boy... Uh, for sending me today's Chronicle of the Collapse. I can't remember. I vaguely recognize this Doomer chick by the name of Sue Colstock. C-O-U-L-S-T-O-C-K. Uh, Sue says in this long book-length essay, uh, that she has only been a doomer for since the fall of last year, that she officially joined the doomosphere, although obviously she had been a doomer chick in the making for years. But anyway, uh, Sue has posted a love letter to her fellow doomers, and since it's so sweet, I am going to uh, share some excerpts of this. I highly advise you to go on and read this whole thing. This thing is over 5,000 words. She gets a little bit TMI in the middle, but anyway, uh, it's worth a read. She has a lot of good links. Uh, so I'm going to read a, a somewhat redacted and edited version. I wouldn't say redacted, just a condensed version of Sue Colstock's Love letter to doomers while I'm waiting for my paint to dry. That's what I do with my life is I wait for the paint to dry while civilization collapses around me. But anyway, we're going to start, I don't know, maybe a quarter of the way down in a love letter to doomers by Sue Colstock. Take it away, Sue. <clears throat> What doomers understand is that Western industrial civilization is itself a cult and that it no more occurs to the average Westerner that this is so than it occurs to the average Jehovah's Witness, exclusive brethren, etc. As with every other cult, at the heart of the cult of Western industrial civilization is the belief that this is the superior and right way to live and that people who question its tenets, particularly its central tenets, meaning uh, unending growth on a finite planet, the central tenet of them all, anyone who questions that, that you cannot have infinite growth on a finite planet are barbarians, heretics, heathens, mentally ill, intellectually inferior or misguided, heartless, morally suspect, difficult, dropouts, and just plain wrong. It's so easy to point your finger at others without counting how many of your own fingers are pointing back at you especially when you have a large peer group, yeah, about 7.9 billion people, that is most willing to join in the finger pointing with you. And doomers, well, they're such a tempting target, so easy to caricature, a dawdle to distort into something most people, atheist included, can be induced to dismiss or despise. And it's so much easier to do that 
than to face the fact that you and yours have blithely done all your life <clears throat> is dangerous and has inbuilt consequences, especially when it was all so normal and you've never given much thought to other ways to live. Monkey see, monkey do. And so many millions of people, I would say, yeah, 70, what would that be, uh, 7.9 billion people take it as a given that normal people drive cars, live in suburbs, buy their food and other necessities in a shop, fly overseas on holidays, acquire material possessions to the limits of their income and frequently beyond on credit, have electric lights and gadgets, rely on heaters and air conditioners to be comfortable in poorly designed houses, complain about the electricity bill, buy new clothes and redecorate the house whenever whim or fashion decree it. When they go into a supermarket, they concept as accept as completely normal that most of the food on the shelves is packaged and processed and has come to them on container ships from other continents. That you can live in a fishing town and your local Woolies doesn't have a scrap of the fish caught off your coast, but fish that has come from across continents and seas to lie at their display. That you could be eating Scottish smoked kippers while someone in Scotland eats Thai farmed barramundi. It mostly doesn't register to them that this is a completely unnecessary use of fossil fuels, mining, and manufactured products at a rate hundreds, even thousands of times over and above what would be needed if you ate as locally as possible. That the food people eat comes wrapped in materials made from mountains, trees, and petrochemicals mostly used one time and thrown away with reuse a rarity these days and recycling largely a fiction to distract conscientious consumers from the real elephant in the room. Uh, my favorite, I've told this story uh, before, my number one favorite thing about this, uh, you know, shipping food all across the planet, when I was living at an eco-lodge, uh, an eco-lodge in St. Croix, I remember sitting under a tamarind tree uh, with the tamarind beans hanging above my head, you know, that you make tamarindo out of. And I noticed that one of my fellow eco-tourists at the eco-lodge had bought a tin can of tamarind beans that were shipped from Sri Lanka so they could make homebrewed tamarindo and drink it under a tamarind tree in an eco-lodge half a planet away. I think that's what uh, Sue is talking about. Anyway, when they, and I certainly include myself because I am getting ready to go into a supermarket in a few hours, when they <clears throat> meaning 99.9% .9 of us and most of the doomers I know, go into a supermarket, they accept as completely normal. Oh, uh-oh, I already uh, read that paragraph, but I was talking about myself a, a lot in that. All right, moving on. Because money is the measure of everything, and thanks to unseen exploitation and the world economic game, it is so affordable for millions of people to do something so environmental, environmentally and socially destructive and senseless. It is literally a race to the bottom. 
ecosystems are obliterated and the powerless exploited to rip materials out of the ground or living things from above the ground or from the oceans as fast as possible to make them into commodities, sell them to consumers any and every way you can, even employing psychologists to help create desire for unnecessary products and have things move into landfills as fast and as wastefully as possible so that new demand is quickly created and those profits continue to pour in for the people holding the strings and or investment portfolios of our dysfunctional societies. And that is the lifestyle of the fundamentalist religion that is the neoliberal necronomic West that is sadly aspired to by many of its colonial and globalization victims in developing countries who have lost connection to their own roots and heritage. Inside of this machine, many ordinary people in the West live quite obliviously, trying to get through their responsibilities and daily challenges, you know, such as killing a hemlock tree to make trim for your tiny house windows, yes, and daily challenges and keep their heads above water trying to pay their increasing rent, often anesthetized by the soma of modern media or by addictions or distractions or lack of reflection and insight from the very machine they were born a part of. It really is quite extraordinary how the veneer of our civilization and what it purports to stand for is so entirely different to what is inside. Don't expect the label to prepare you for the thoroughly rotten contents of the can. It is the ultimate marketing trick and you are encultured into it from before you learn to walk. Most people, to a large degree, believe these myths. Breaking out of those is a painful process akin to the faith crises of those starting to escape their religions. Many people in a cult will never make it out. And so that's about halfway through. And then uh, she gives, as they say, a little bit too much TMI about her own uh, personal life. And then she gets more to the point, instead of talking about all of the cult members, all of the non-doomers, she turns her attention to the doomers and sends us this love letter. The label doomer is so derogatory, well, not in my opinion, I, I am a proud, non-repentant, unapologetic doomer, but I know what she means here. The label doomer is so derogatory, I wonder who invented it. Probably an unpleasant person who wanted to insult and discredit his targets. The funny thing is, doomers just recognize doom and see it for what it is. They're not the ones dooming everyone else, which seems to be the implication. Every narcissistic circus wants a scapegoat. The world is not going to hell in a handbasket because doomers refuse to think positively and buy all the greenwash on offer, but because Homo Colossus has been exterminating the biosphere, has been for thousands of years treating the intricate web of life and the land itself as a commodity to sell or vacation rent in the marketplace, and has 
for hundreds of years been developing modern technologies that allow him to do it ever faster and more effectively, such as that fine gator, that John Deere gator, uh, and the power saw, and the uh, battery-powered impact driver, anyway, that I'm going to be putting to use as soon as I finish this sermon. Back to Sue. Where are the doomers do so much better than the eco-optimist, you know, the apocalyptimist, I call them. The eco-optimist is that they, the doomers, have a much more comprehensive understanding of physical, ecological, social, and historical realities, and they do not support industrial-scale use of alternative technologies and its conco concomitant further destruction of the biosphere through mining, transportation, and general industrial activities required to produce them. These technologies, you know, these bright green uh, Alter, alternative technologies to fossil fuels is what she's talking about. These technologies will not avert the accelerating ecological catastrophe. They will merely allow Homo Colossus to continue to exploit and destroy on the way down. If we humans were really serious about addressing the damage we have caused, we would not be ramping up industry, we would be dismantling it. We would protect with our own lives every last scrap of remnant native ecosystem we haven't already destroyed. We would understand that our species is in severe overshoot and immediately move to having small families, preferably zero or one, to reduce our overshoot and the suffering and annihilation this is currently inflicting on other species. I don't know if she ever mentions whether she and her husband have any children or not. Uh, my guess is she has zero or one, I don't really know. We would do it without whining about human rights and convenience, primarily for the sake of the unraveling web of life, which is now experiencing some 200 species extinctions daily. But also for the sake of people already in the world today. We would immediately stop consuming things we don't really need and go back to the basics. So many doomers are doing the right thing regardless of the anticipated outcome, W-A-S-F, just because it is the right thing, and because the moment is all we have in matters and has meaning. If the general public, and for that matter, the mainstream environmental movement had done as much in the last 100 years, we would not even be in this position, and yet doomers get spat on in public spaces. That is why I am writing this love letter. An important part of that is to explicitly appreciate and thank others, other doomers, for the good things they do and aspire to, and out of the closet doomers get little of that from the general public. So I wish to conclude this epistle by sending love and thanks to Doomers everywhere. I want to thank Doomers for their personal struggles 
to get through the fog of modern society and possibly their own family or general social backgrounds. This is hard stuff and ongoing work. I want to thank them for the love, care, and respect they extend to other species and to nature as a whole for being biocentric, not anthropocentric. I have never met a Doomer who believes in human exceptionalism and supremacy. I want to thank them for their critiques of the propaganda of our civilization, which is pretty much what Collapse Chronicles is, by and large, uh, is a critique of the propaganda of our civilization and for not falling for those who have been greenwashing business as usual, which has been going on for a long time. It is never easy to take a different position from the general cultural narrative. I want to thank them for the love, care, and support extended to other Doomers who are not well loved by the mainstream, with exceptions such as David Attenborough, but most people would not know that about him. We, meaning Doomers, are not perfect. We are human. We make mistakes and we have issues to deal with, just like everybody else, but none of us ignore the peril that the biosphere is in, nor do we feel entitled to wipe out other species. And above all, I want to thank Doomers for being themselves and applying themselves to their various arenas for speaking out, for keeping track, otherwise for chronicling, for defending nature in various ways, for collecting and analyzing data, for planting habitat, for cleaning up, for not keeping up with the Joneses, for whispering for raising hell, for growing your own food, eating local, for making films and art, for making lunch, for writing aphorisms and poems and songs and oddities and essays and papers and blogs, for picking each other up, making each other laugh, and making us dream of how things might have been. Thank you. And thank you, Sister Sue. Sister Sue and uh, Sue Colstock from her Love Letters to Doomers Chronicle. And obviously I will put the link on here and uh, which will take you over to her website uh, where you can find some other stuff that she has written. But right now, after having that love letter read to me by a Doomer chick who does not know I'm alive on the planet, Sue is married, by the way, and I think she lives in Europe. So, uh, probably no future between me and Sue. <clears throat> Another Doomer chick, uh, lost to the winds. Oh boy, I can smell uh, the first whisper of smoke on the breeze. The wind starting to pick up coming in from Canada. So, uh, anyway, I'd better, uh, wrap this up and get back to, uh, trimming my windows in uh, Seahorse in the Pines tiny house. Come see me at Bugs in a Jar Farm while you still can. Bye guys. Say bye guys. Bye guys.
You need to go get that chippy. That chippy. You need to get that chippy again, I bet. Where's that chippy?